We're in Max Clover grazing experiment. 20th of August, we've had a drier than average winter. And it's been more frosty and on the average colder. We're just starting to um, stock the ewes and their twin lambs. And we're here in Rep 1. The ryegrass subclover and balanza treatments are going to be stocked first because we grazed the coxfoot plots in midwinter. That was because the coxfoot was getting a bit rank and diseased and we reckoned we had to take the top off it. The ewes did a jolly good job in doing that and at the time the subclover was fairly short, less than a centimetre high and they didn't nibble too much of it so that was good but we will not be stocking the coxfoot plots for another week or so. We'll, we'll get all the first lammers onto the ryegrass. These ryegrass plots have been spelled for about four months to accumulate good lambing feed and in fact at the moment we've got about 1800 of dry matter and around about 30% clover, 30 to 40% clover on offer to these ewes with their twins. Now we're having a close up look at the pasture in plot one, uh, the, the ryegrass and annual clovers is looking fairly attractive for a hungry ewe with twins. The little quadrat is a hundredth of a metre square and you can see, uh, get a rough idea of the amount of clover and grass on offer. The plantain's looking a bit rat eaten, it's uh, perhaps suffering a wee bit from frost or maybe there's a fungus disease having a go at the old leaves there. The ryegrass uh, was oversown with extra endophyte infected um, seed in autumn and we didn't graze these plots in late autumn winter because we wanted those young ryegrass seedlings to get going. But uh, they'll have to take their chances now and with a bit of luck they'll mostly survive and we'll have a better balance of grass to clover and plantain in these pastures this spring.